This is a, another problem solving video. This is for the worksheet with it, which is an introduction to conversions. This is taking a look at a couple of the problems on the back side of the page, mostly dealing with moles. And so this is question 12. If you have 1.206 times 10 to the 23rd trash cans, how many moles would you have? And so the equality we want to start out by writing would be one mole equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd things, which in this case would be trash cans. So if we have 1.206 times 10 to the 23rd trash cans, and we want to know how many moles that is, then we can use that equality we would put 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd trash cans in the denominator and one mole of trash cans in the numerator. When we look at what we have set up here, you may notice that we have 10 to the 23rd in both the numerator and the denominator. So those will each cancel. When we do this math, we get 0 0.200265, and I'm going to round here 7, which is higher, more places than we should really be keeping. The 10 to the 23rd cancel, so this is really times 10 to the 0, which 10 to the 0 would be 1, and we wouldn't include that there or we could make it 10 to the negative first by moving the decimal to the right, but there really isn't much point in doing that. So we would instead look at significant figures. Now is this a counted number? It technically is. We technically have as many trash cans as we can possibly count. And so yeah, we can keep as many significant figures as we want in our answer. Is it realistic that somebody would actually take the time to count 1.206 times to the 23rd trash cans? No, you would not be able to count that higher in your lifetime. And so instead, it's probably more realistic just to keep the four that we have here in the beginning. So we're going to round and say that it's 0 0.2003 moles of trash cans. The next question is 13, which was also a request. If you have that many grains of sand, how many moles would you have? So again, we're looking at the equality one mole equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd things. And in this case, those things would be sand grains. Now this is kind of a tricky question because you can plug this directly into your calculator, but the main question I have is how many zeros are there? So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 zeros. So we could say 301 times 10 to the 15th. Is that scientific notation? No, because for that to actually be scientific notation, we have to have the decimal directly behind just one digit. So we would have to move the decimal two more places to the right, turning this into 3.01 times 10 to the 17th. This is, however, engineering notation. or exponential notation. But this one here is the technical scientific notation. In engineering notation, you go in thousands. So you would go 10 to the 3rd, 10 to the 6th, 10 to the 9th, 10 to the 12th, 10 to the 15th, if the number was large enough, 10 to the 18th, etc. So I'm going to work from this as though it's in scientific notation and say 3.01 times 10 to the 17th sand grains times 
times, we have our equality here for the mole, times one mole of sand grains over 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Again, we can look at just the coefficients. And when we divide the coefficients, we get almost exactly one half. We get 0 0.49983 and some other stuff, whatever that is. We also can look at the exponents. When we divide exponents like this, this is going to be 0 0.49983 times 10 to the... The rule for exponents when you do division is that you subtract them. So 17 minus 23. So what is 17 minus 23? 17 minus 23 is 10 to the negative 6th. We also can't really leave this with the decimal behind the 0 if we want scientific notation. So we're going to move the decimal 1 to the right. When we move the decimal 1 to the right, the exponent goes down 1. So this becomes 4.9983 times 10 to the negative seventh. Now, how many digits do you keep? Again, technically the grains of sand would be a counted number. Again, it is unrealistic to expect that anybody actually counted that many grains of sand. So instead we're gonna go with three places and say that this number would actually have something like three significant figures. Three significant figures means this number would need to be rounded and so it would actually be 5.00, .00 times 10 to the negative 7th moles. Again, you could make an argument for keeping as many significant figures here as you wanted to because it's a counted number, but it might be wise to look at what you're starting with, and look at how many places you have there. If it was not a counted number, how many significant figures would it have? So the final question in this video, number 15, is a little bit different. If one mole of iron is 55.85 grams, how many moles are in 23.0 grams of iron? So this question now doesn't require us to use the definition of the mole that's given on the worksheet. Instead, we are given the equality in the question itself. We are told one mole of iron symbolized by a capital letter F and a lowercase letter E, one mole of iron equals 55.85 grams of iron. That gives us the equality we need to determine how many moles are in 23.0 grams of iron. So starting from 23.0 grams of iron, we would convert the grams of iron to moles of iron By placing grams on opposite sides, grams would cancel. We would be left with moles of iron. Technically, these labels here also cancel. It's grams of the same thing, so everything there cancels. So all that's left to do is to plug this into the calculator. After plugging it into the calculator, we find 0 0.4. 4, 4, 4, 0 0.411817, etc., etc. You should see the same number when you plug this into your calculator. Now, what can we keep? Now, this 23 grams is definitely not a counted number, so now we are definitely limited in our significant figures. How many significant figures are in the 23.0 grams of iron? Three significant figures. How many significant figures are in our molar mass of iron? Four. Which of those limits how many we can keep in our answer? The iron will limit how many we can keep in our answer. We can only keep three, the grams of iron, the original grams of iron as opposed to the molar mass with four will limit how many we can keep in our answer. 
So our answer really is going to be 0 0.412 moles of iron.